In your book, you call Edward Snowden an incredibly naive and insufferably self-important defector. We'll come back to the defector accusation in a moment, but how can he be naive and self-important given the massive impact he's had on the judicial and legislative branches uh, in this country, given a federal court has ruled that the NSA's uh, bulk collection of American phone records was most likely unconstitutional, and given Congress has passed a law now restricting NSA bulk collection, surely Edward Snowden has been vindicated. You. Betty, you're making my case. This man stole somewhere between a quarter and a half a million documents, shoved them out the door, and the only change in American intelligence that's been documented, other than some voluntary restraints that President Obama has put on us, and by the way, we can change our mind at any time, yep. the only thing that's happened judicially or legislatively is that the metadata program that Mr. Snowden revealed, now the metadata, rather than being kept by NSA, is being kept by American telecommunications providers, period. That's it. Three years into this, that's the only thing that's changed. Well, a court judge, a federal court judge saying it was most likely unconstitutional? Most likely, what? but not a definitive, not a definitive holding. Things take time in the American system. Well, that, actually, they do. And, and but by my the point being is these changes, however minor you may say they are, yeah. wouldn't have happened. Had it not been Fred Snowden, you can call him whatever you like. Well, that, but you well, can't well, call him naive and self-important. He's had a massive impact on the world and well, on look, America. Well, look, under President Bush, NSA had access to American metadata. Under President Obama, America, NSA had access to American metadata. Today, NSA has access to American metadata. Now, there have been, there have been changes between the presidents and pre and post Snowden. But fundamentally, the American political system has agreed NSA needs to have access to American metadata. You call him By the way, the other 98% of the stuff he shoved out the door had nothing to do with American privacy. It had everything to do with how the United States collects foreign intelligence. Including spying on your allies. Um, you call him a defector. What's your evidence for that claim? Because Barton Gelman of the Washington Post, respected national security reporter who knows Snowden, has interviewed top intelligence officials. He says there's no evidence on public record or even in private intelligence that Snowden has defected or betrayed his country. Stealing? quarter to a half a million documents and starting a process by which those documents were made public, documents that reveal Defector how has this a very particular meaning. Yeah, he, Who did he defect to? He, he defected to the Russian Federation. You believe that he's working for Russia? No, I, I, I didn't say that, but he's being given, he is big, being given safe harbor by the asylum, Russian Federation. Yeah, asylum is, 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 is the phrase. So how is he a defector? Well, what else is he? someone who leaked information he sees himself as a whistleblower uh, and whistleblowing requires someone to actually point out a violation of law and and he's not he's not done yes that. point to that violation of law. we just talked about judges who are saying this is almost Orwellian and most likely unconstitutional well actually what the judge said was they did not think that the Patriot Act as constructed justified the program as conducted all right it's Quite another matter for Congress then to change its mind and simply say, no, that's what we intended. But we didn't get there because the administration agreed that we would be safe enough by having access to the metadata kept by the last, telecoms. Last summer, one senior U.S. intelligence official uh, said that thinking inductively as intelligence operatives are supposed to do, there is, quote, no evidence that Snowden has defected. That's me. Yeah. No, not that he defected, not that, that he, did not, he did not do this on behalf of a foreign power. But he did flee. All right. He did seek asylum in a foreign power. One wonders why he did that. You know, well, in well, the American tradition... You have suggested that he should be put on a kill list. Former CIA director no, James Woolsey <laughs> said he should be hanged by the neck until he's dead. You can't blame him for hanging out in Moscow when former CIA directors are calling for his death. Well, actually, in the American tradition, the best that could be said about Mr. Snowden is that this is an act of civil disobedience. In the, Ameri the American classic... So should he be hanged from the neck until he's dead? In the American dead? classic for civil disobedience is Henry David Thoreau's yes. book of the same name. And Thoreau points out, and when Americans kind of hug this pretty closely, Thoreau points out that civil disobedience gets its moral authority by the willingness to stand trial and accept punishment, accept the consequences And, he's, and he said on this very show, I interviewed him, he said he's willing to stand trial as long as he's able to mount a defense. And under the no, Espionage no. Act, he can't. He's not even allowed to stand his No, no, his not, case. not a defense. He wants to be able to, to, to mount a, a public interest defense, which frankly means, I know it's against the law, 
but I'm a nice guy and I thought it was a good thing. To go back to my question, do you believe he should be assassinated and put on a kill list as many say you suggested? I, I didn't say that. You said he should be put on a list. It, it, it was a light comic. Yeah, which was, list? It was Christmas a... card list? <laughs> Birthday list? Do you want the background? Do you want your viewers to know the background for this? I'm just wondering. You said he should be put I on a list. I was there in a panel in downtown Washington. And there was an they, award. She was nominated he, for an nominated award. Nominated for that list. And, and you I said, said I could think of another list. What I said was in my darker moments. Yes. I have thought about that. So in your darker moments, you've yeah. thought about killing him? Well, because he has been tremendously destructive to American security. So do you support assassinating I Edward Snowden? I've never supported assassinating Edward Do you support Edward executing Snowden? Edward Snowden, as I James Woolsey has suggested? No, I, I, I probably don't. I do, I do support his standing trial in front of a jury of his peers I think he here supports in his that homeland. Too. When you were asked about Trump's proposal to take out the families of terrorists, mm -hmm. uh, you said the U.S. military would refuse to act because they are, quote, not required to follow an unlawful order. Actually, and actually, what I said was they were required not to follow. Required not to follow. And yet when President Bush asked you and the NSA to collect mm -hmm. Americans' Internet metadata after 9-11 as part of a program called Stellar Wind, mm -hmm. a secret program uh, without any court-approved warrants, uh, some would say you engaged in a potentially illegal order. You didn't refuse to follow That's right. that illegal order. It was an order that so upset the acting attorney general who he threatened to resign. Well, actually, and yet you followed that order. Was that an illegal order that you followed? No, it, it looks like it. No. Well, now, now we're going to have to go back to some of the details in the book. All right. Now, first of all, I didn't believe it was illegal. The attorney general at the time did not believe it was illegal. And by the way, my lawyers at NSA, who were very conservative about these kinds of things, they didn't think it was illegal either. Now, at one point, the acting attorney general, Jim Comey, disagreed with one aspect of this is the Stellar Wind program that you mentioned earlier. Jim disagreed with one aspect, not the rest of it, one aspect of the Stellar Wind program. I was willing to take it through one more 45-day period because the approvals ran in that month and a half cycle until we settled this more broadly. The president, however, decided, even though I had agreed to go forward with this one aspect, the president decided that we would stop. Now, so had you been carrying out an illegal operation up until no, that point? No. Looks like it. The president decided to stop it. Oh, no, no. Come on. Let's, let's do facts. Design. Let's you do facts. An illegal order. No, let's do facts. To, to I then, I then, I then asked, I then asked the president form. and the Department of Justice, what do I do then with this one particular activity? What do I do with the information I've already collected? And the response I got was, don't throw it away. Keep it. Which then begins to suggest that there's some contention. Okay, so the people who as gave you the going. illegal order said, "Don't throw away the illegal stuff we illegally and then, collected." That's and th convenient. And then, over the summer that followed, this was March of 2004. Over the summer that followed, we went to the courts, with, with broadly speaking, so did, the same approach. You did approach. the surveillance first, and then went to the courts. It looks like you followed an unlawful order. You say that people don't follow unlawful order. You okay. general look like you followed that. Okay. Let's, let's go back. Wind. Let's go back to American, okay, uh, American political science 101. Okay, American constitutional law. The Constitution empowers the president with very, very strong authorities when it comes to waging war, his, his commander-in-chief authorities. It was, it, it was the belief of the administration that the president's commander-in-chief authorities authorized him to do this. Agreed. For, for most of the Stoddard Wind program, there was no pushback in the administration that it did but indeed. a Donald Trump president could also ah. define something as within his powers, and you're saying, well, we wouldn't follow those orders, but you followed Bush's orders. Be 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 because I had an attorney general and a legal structure that told me that Bush's orders Donald were illegal. Donald Trump's attorney general could tell you whatever he tells you to do is legal. Well, then... Okay. I'm just wondering your logic. Medi, 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 that's an argument for doing nothing to defend the republic. No, that's an argument for following through your advice, which is you, sh you as a military officer shouldn't follow patently illegal orders. Well, well, I, it's, I, your, it's your I, words, not I, mine. I never did follow patently illegal orders. E even in the dispute in the administration, again, about this one narrow aspect of Star Wars, even there, it was, even though we were arguing with one another, it was not clear cut. And by the way, to round out the story, Matty, yep. within three or four months, we were back up doing the same thing, this time under a court order but still in secret until Edward Snowden. Uh, well, the, the American system, all right, has to compromise between a, a general political culture that demands transparency and a particular activity, espionage, that needs secrecy for its success. The compromise, Mehdi, is we don't tell 320 million of our countrymen, we tell our oversight committees on the Hill, okay. and that's what was done.